The Holy Spirit has been speaking much to me about the forceful drive being perpetrated worldwide to introduce a purported medicine by needle into every human on the planet. I have received a number of dreams bringing revelation and understanding, and I feel led to share these things in a series of posts. He started by showing me the whole scenario from God's point of view as he watches his beautiful creation being sabotaged. The visual picture which the Holy Spirit used was a wonderfully crafted palace surrounded by a high wall. This amazing edifice was guarded day and night from intruders, and only the king and those carefully vetted attendants serving him were allowed access. Then one day a very destructive device was smuggled into the palace using a trusted page boy, and the king was unaware that right within the throne room the enemy had positioned one of his henchmen. We can see the same scenario in the positioning of Haman right next to King Xerxes. Oblivious to the danger, King Xerxes handed Haman his signet ring and gave him permission to send out a death decree. And you can read about that in Esther 3 verse 8. The human cell nucleus is that walled palace. The human cell is created with a nucleus wall to protect the scroll of DNA within its nucleus. Just like a wall is built around a palace to protect the ruler of a nation, these very important unique documents, our books or DNA scrolls, are guarded from marauders. Nothing is allowed to breach that wall and only trusted messengers are permitted to enter or leave that hallowed place. From within the nucleus, orders are issued by the DNA and carried by the messenger RNA through the nucleus wall to the Golgi apparatus, which is a factory making proteins to build and strengthen the body. No other substance can pass through that nucleus wall except human mRNA. It is considered trustworthy to carry and deliver the messages issued. I once heard a plant virologist describe mRNA or messenger RNA like a shopping trolley. You can load whatever you want in it and it will transport it to the intended destination. Now this works well when the human body is not interfered with. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Messenger RNA faithfully carries the instructions issued by the unique DNA dwelling in the nucleus citadel. Psalm 139 verse 14 says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are marvelous and my soul knows it very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully formed in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance and in your book or scroll all the days of my life were written and engraved before ever they took shape, when as yet there were none of them. Now did you know that every single strand of human DNA is marked with the name of God? How, you ask? Because there are sulfide bonds holding together the two strands that make up the DNA. And these bonds occur after the tenth pair of nucleotides, again after the fifth pair, and then six pairs later, and again five pairs later. The tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Yod, the fifth letter is He, the sixth letter is Vav. Yod, He, Vav, He spells Yahweh. I will say it again. God's name is on every human chromosome. You are made in his image and sealed with the name of your creator. Every cell in your body is hallmarked. And it is this very divine hallmark that the enemy desires to obliterate. By injecting loaded messenger RNA into cells, one can sneak fragments of foreign enemy DNA through the carefully guarded nuclear walls and unload their contents into the scroll of DNA that God wrote for you. That's like pasting some pages of a counterfeit author's book into the middle of the instruction blueprint God wrote. What is actually happening is that the name of God written into the sulfide bond arrangement in the DNA scroll is being erased. The beautiful scroll engraved by God to create a man in his image is being sabotaged and from that moment of splicing onward, instead of instructions being released from the palace for life and health and security of the body, the inserted DNA loads up the messenger RNA trolley with instructions for the protein factory in the cell outside the palace to start manufacturing enemy spike proteins. The protein factory just does what is told. 
whatever orders arrive from headquarters are immediately carried out. To put it simply, once the potion is injected into the body, every single citadel guarding the scrolls signed with the name of their creator within you is hijacked and forced to issue instructions to manufacture weapons of death, which will not only kill you at some point, but also the people around you. It is a cleverly engineered coup on a worldwide scale to throw off the rulership of God over his creation. So who is behind this dastardly plot? What does Psalm 2 say? In verse 2, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. The word for band means bond, halter or restraint. Is it not the carefully placed sulphide bonds that depict Yahweh's name, which are disrupted and broken asunder by the vaccine contents? The word cord in Hebrew also means entwined, rope or thick boughs. Is the DNA not entwined like a rope? Perhaps you can now see the plan of the kings of the earth, the elite, who are banding together and arraying themselves against the Lord. The plan is to hijack his creation, destroy his image, remove his signature, and transform the human body into a genetically modified part human, part computer, which can be controlled externally. Sounds like science fiction, but tragically, it is the truth. Satan hates all who are made in God's image. Every earthen vessel that is intended to become a dwelling place of his spirit, receiving daily communication from the throne room of heaven. For centuries, he has been content to defile the bodies and souls of man by luring them into sin of every kind. But always, his greatest ambition has been to sit in the place intended only for God in the human body. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 says, his intention is to sit as God in the temple of God, setting himself forth as if he is God. Many are waiting for the third temple to be built so that the Antichrist can go and sit in it. But the body of Christ is the third temple, a temple not built with hands. And the diabolical deception currently underway is the first step in the rollout of the plan to install the abomination that causes desolation right within the holy place of the third temple. In the holy place, the place where the unique engraved scroll of your creator is stored in a walled citadel, the enemy has already lifted up his battle cry. How apt is the cry of the psalmist in Psalm 74. Verse 3 says, Direct your feet quickly to the perpetual ruins and desolations the foe has devastated and desecrated everything in the sanctuary. In the midst of your holy place, your enemies have roared with their battle cry. They have set up their own emblems for signs of victory. They seemed like men who lifted up axes upon a thicket of trees to make themselves a record. And then all the carved wood of the holy place, they broke down with hatchets and hammers. They have set your sanctuary on fire. They have profaned the dwelling place of your name by casting it to the ground. O oh God, how long is your adversary to scoff and reproach? Is the enemy to blaspheme and revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand, even your right hand? Draw it out of your bosom and consume them and make an end of them. They have profaned the dwelling place of your name. There is no better description of what is happening worldwide in the human body than these words. And in every nation, believers are being coerced into taking the supposed health-inducing jab. Is this not causing the great falling away described in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3? The totality of the scheme is to leave the third temple desolate, destroyed, overtaken and subjugated to an ancient enemy who always coveted God's throne and the worship of God's bride. Apostasia, the Greek for falling away, means defection from truth and comes from the Strong's G647, which means to separate, the writing of divorcement. How significant that a fragment of DNA writing is what separates or breaks asunder the record 
of God's name in the human DNA. Now obviously the smuggling in of the death warrant to the guarded throne room involves deception and subterfuge. No one would allow such an intrusion if it was advertised by its true content. The coup is enacted under the guise of a delivery of a basket of wishes for health and happiness. Revelation chapter 18 speaks of the judgment that is incurred by those who carry out this deception. As you read the selected verse, remember that the Greek word translated sorceries is pharmakia, the word from which we get pharmacy or dispenser medicine. Revelation 18 verse 23b For your merchants were the great ones of the earth, for by your sorceries all nations were deceived. So it is pharmaceutical deceptions which are employed to pull the wool over the eyes of all the nations. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 11 says, A strong delusion is released so that people believe a lie. The Greek for delusion comes from a root word meaning deceiver or imposter. So the recurring theme is deception which brings destruction. No surprise that pharmakia also means witchcraft and comes from a root word meaning drug or poisoner. Poison is intended to induce the death of the victim. The word tells us that the life is in the blood. It is surely no coincidence that the foreign spike proteins which the human body is forced to produce after it is hijacked trigger blood clots which in turn cause fatal heart attacks and strokes. It is Satan who seeks to kill, steal and destroy. Jesus came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Satan desires to remove God's image and replace it with his image. Revelation 14 verse 9 tells us that. He plans to remove God's name and replace it with his name. Revelation 14 verse 11. Ask yourself, who else could be behind the erasing of God's name in your DNA scroll? Beloved, God says his people perish for lack of knowledge. Many pastors and shepherds worldwide are urging their congregations to receive the pharmakia on offer. May the sheep wake up and see the edge of the precipice before they plunge over it. I would urge you to guard and keep your temple holy unto the Lord. Do not allow it to be breached. Cherish his name encoded into the scroll of life within you and take refuge under the shadow of his wings. Do not run to Egypt or Babylon for help. Do all you can to boost your divinely built immune system naturally and do not allow yourself to be deceived. Be a lover of truth. Seek truth. Go after it. 2 Thessalonians 2 is clear that it is those who do not love truth who will fall prey to the strong delusion wrapping its fingers around the globe. Do not succumb to those who call evil good and scheme to overthrow and render your holy place desolate. You will pay for it with your life. Rather entrust yourself to him who is the truth, the life and the way. Choose life that you and your children may live. And I want to end with 2 Corinthians 6 verse 16. What agreement does the temple of God have with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord, and do not touch the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty. And the word for unclean thing is akathartos, meaning foul, unclean, and demonic. May God Almighty give you the strength to stand uncompromising in the days which we are facing. <laughs>